Today I have a very interesting topic um, and I want to ask you, why does it matter that Jesus rose from the dead? Why, why does it even bother people that Jesus rose from the dead? Why is it important? I want to show you the importance of why Jesus had to rise and how important it is for us as Christians. Okay, let's, let's begin. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is one of the foundations upon which Christianity is built. I always speaking up the, about the gospel and uh, today I'll start with the gospel. The Bible says, look at this, this is Paul speaking, he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. This is not the gospels. The gospels, those are the life of Jesus, our Savior. But this is the gospel, the one point which we are saved, okay? The one point, the good news. I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you. Paul preached this gospel to us back in the days in the book of Romans and Corinthians and all through. And Paul started preaching from even the book of Acts. He was preaching. So he was telling these people of Corinth, I, this is the gospel which I'm giving you, which I already preached unto you, which also you have received. How do you receive the good news? By faith. Salvation is by faith. You receive it by faith. And wherein you stand, you stand in this. You don't stand in how good you are. You don't stand in the good things that you do and everything. You stand in that gospel, that good news, by which also you are saved. You're looking for how to be saved. This is how you can be saved, by the gospel. If you keep in memory, keep in memory, what I preached unto you unless you believed in vain. Now, why do we have to keep the gospel in memory? Something that you have heard and you have not kept in memory, it means you did not understand. And the gospel is all about understanding. We believe from our hearts. We don't believe from our minds. Uh, you remember when you were in school, your teacher used to tell you, don't cram that formula. Please understand the formula so that it can remain in your memory. Now, that's the same way with the gospel. You have to understand what really happened. What really happened so that you can keep it in memory. What I preached unto you. Paul is saying, I want you to keep in memory what I preached unto you unless you believed in vain. So Paul was preaching the gospel all through and he had already preached this gospel. He preached so many places and the Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? So Paul was a preacher of the gospel unless you believed in vain. Believing in vain is believing that there's something else that you can do apart from the gospel to be saved. Now let's continue. For I deliver unto you first that uh, for I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received. This is very important to understand. Where did you get this gospel, Paul? He Paul tells us in the book of Galatians 1 uh, to, uh, verse 11 to 12 that this gospel that I preached unto you is not after men. I never heard of men, neither was I taught by men, but it was a revelation from Jesus Christ. So this gospel he was revealed to by Jesus Christ himself. Jesus revealed to him. Remember Paul went to the deserts of Arabia for 14 years to be taught the gospel by Jesus there. Jesus taught him for 14 years in those deserts. And then now here comes the gospel. I deliver unto you first which I also received. Now here comes the gospel. The gospel is basically understanding how and that's why it's very important to always have your King James. In other versions, they don't say that word, how. Because it's really important to understand how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried. Uh, let, let me just first uh, start with this. How that Christ died. Let's see first the, the, the falls of uh, this gospel before I come to the word how. Christ died. You have to understand that Christ died. Jesus uh, the incarnate Jesus, God, the Son, came here and he died literally. He became man and he died for our sins. He didn't die for nothing. He died for our sins as a replacement for our sins. According to the scriptures, okay, 
the scriptures told us this we were not there and that he was buried okay so if you believe that jesus was buried it means that he took your sins and left them at the grave he became our unleavened bread and that he rose again so if jesus rose again then we believe that he will also rise us because the the holy spirit rose jesus from the grave and the same holy spirit is sealed inside us ephesians 1 13 and the same holy spirit is going to rise us up again on that day the third day according to the scriptures if you believe the scriptures then you believe god the father because god the father is the one who inspired the scriptures we were not there we just believe the scriptures and without faith it is impossible to please god now let's come to the word how how that christ died how did jesus die jesus died by shedding his blood the bible says in the book of hebrews without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins okay why blood if jesus could have died of heart attack had died of um, drowning in water, strangling, electrocution, many ways to die without shedding blood. Could there be no salvation? I don't think so because the Bible says without shedding of blood, without shedding of blood, there can be forgiveness of sins. Why blood? Why is the blood so important? Because the Bible says in the book of Leviticus 17, 11, that uh, let me let me not just go there let me, for the sake of time that the life of the flesh is in the blood and i've given you the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your souls for it is the blood that atones for the soul so without blood you can't atone for the soul but it's not just any blood it's the blood of someone who is clean you're guilty i'm guilty so i can't atone for you you can't atone for me we can only be atoned for our sins by someone who is clean like jesus christ are you seeing the point here so uh once you understand the gospel once you understand how christ died and why he died for your sins okay he died for your sins if you understand that then all you need to do is to believe and confess okay you confess to christ what you have believed you only confess what you know that's why the sinner's prayer cannot save because sinner's prayer is confessing something that you don't know okay but once you understand is when you confess the bible says if you confess with your mouth you're confessing what you know you tell jesus jesus now i understand that you died for my sins you are buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures when you understand that and you tell him jesus now be my lord and my savior i receive that atonement that payment of sin by faith then you're saved that is the full gospel so now let's come to the point here the resurrection of jesus is very important here he rose again okay it's very important jesus rising and also uh another foundation of jesus just before i come to why uh, resurrection is important another foundation of a uh, christianity apart from understanding that christ is risen we are not preaching a dead christ we are preaching a risen christ eh? is also another foundation is the virgin birth in isaiah 7 14 okay isaiah 7 14 it was prophesied okay that uh, someone would be born from a from a virgin it was prophesied therefore the lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name emmanuel hmm this is the prophecy before jesus is born let's see the fulfillment okay matthew 1 verse 18 it gives us the fulfillment all the same now the birth of jesus was on this wise when at when uh, his mother mary was exposed to joseph before they came together she was found with child of the holy ghost you see a virgin a virgin and verse 25 tells us here and he knew her not until she had he, uh, she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name jesus yes of course after that uh, uh, jesus had other brothers and uh, sisters of uh, you know here on earth because uh, mary and joseph uh, they, they had other children but before 
Joseph knew her. She brought forth the firstborn son, meaning he was born of the Holy Spirit, virgin birth. And also Luke 127 tells us about the same account. And also another foundation of Christianity, you have to understand, is the deity of Christ. The deity of Christ, the one who, who came. Who was he? Who was Jesus? Who was Jesus? Was he just any other ordinary man? Look, the Bible says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. You see, Jesus is not just any other person. He's a Son of God. God dwelleth in him and he and he in God. Okay? So, you have to understand, unless you accept that Jesus is the Son of God, because there are people who say, oh, Jesus is not really the Son of God. He was, uh, you know, this and this and this and this. Other stories, you really ask yourself, ah, what are these people talking about? Because they say, no, Jesus was uh, just a man. Others, they say he was God only. He, was, he never became flesh. He never became human being. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? You see, Jesus is the Son of God. He is God himself. Okay? Jesus is God. You have to understand that fact. And also, John, uh, it's good I show you these verses because... Uh, uh, please don't don't worry about the delay on what I wanted to speak about. But it's good I show you these uh, 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 verses. I and my father are one. You see, Jesus and his father are one. So meaning, Jesus is also God. Okay? is God. So that one is very important. And another foundation of Christianity is to understand that Jesus' atonement for sin he atoned for us. That atonement is very important. Okay? Jesus' is atonement for sin. 5, Romans 5, uh, verses 10. Look at that atonement for sin that Jesus uh, gave. For if, when we were enemies, we were, re we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. You see? Jesus reconciled us to God by his death. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now, here we are coming to the point of why the life of Jesus is important. If Jesus could have died, okay, and then he doesn't rise, then it could have meant that uh, we have no hope. Once we die, we're going to be just like that because we have the life of Jesus. And if he never rose, then why... What will be the hope now? There will be no hope. Are you seeing the point here? And verse 11 says, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So Jesus atoned for us. He atoned for us. Okay? He atoned for us. And now since we have this atonement, we are sure that the person who atoned for us has given us life. He has given us life. Uh, let's see. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians five, uh, verse twenty-one. It says, "It says, for he has made him to be sin for us." You see, Jesus took our sins; he became sin for us. Who knew no sin? Jesus knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Okay. So you have to understand Jesus's crucifixions. His uh, crucifixion are non-negotiable truths. His crucifixion, his death, burial, and resurrection, and, and, and all that. Those are non-negotiables. Okay? You have to understand that. And also him rising is a non-negotiable. That's, that's really, really good to understand. Him rising was very, very important. Without which Christianity could not exist if Jesus could not have risen. Jesus' resurrection from the dead was the crowning achievement that forever separates him from any other religious leader who has ever been or will ever live. There is no other religious figure in history who has ever prophesied his own death and resurrection then accomplished it. This is a prophecy which was fulfilled. Jesus prophesied that he would die and resurrect and for sure we saw that. Now, the fact that Jesus rose from the dead is very important because it fulfilled all this prophecy. 
Jesus prophesied his resurrection. Do you know he prophesied his resurrection? Oh, you think he didn't? <laughs> he did. In uh, uh, Mark 8, 31, Jesus said that he would resurrect. Look, he said, and he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. You see, Jesus prophesied his death, burial, and resurrection, and it happened. Who has ever done that? Not even Mohammed, not even Buddha, not even all these other fellas out there. No one has ever done that. Only Jesus has done this. And that's why we should be very, very confident of his uh, life. And uh, also, even the Old Testament prophesied about the same. The Old Testament talked about that Jesus would, uh, would um, uh, die and resurrect. The book of Psalms 16.10, it says, For thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thine only one to see corruption. This is David saying, hey, Jesus, I know you'll not leave my soul in hell. Or will you see, uh, uh, suffer thine holy one to see corruption? They will show me the path of life in the presence. In thy presence is fullness of joy at the right hand where there are pleasures evermore. You see, Jesus, he was to go to uh, down there. In hell and other places. Remember back in the days. When people died. They were not going directly to heaven. Paradise was down below our feet. And uh, you could be able to see hell. And see paradise. Because remember the story of Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus could see uh, the rich man. And the rich man could see him. So I, I think that's why David was saying. You will not leave me down there. Where near hell is. Because right now the Bible says. Now hell has enlarged. When Jesus went down and he picked uh, David and all the other uh, saints and took them up with him to heaven, now paradise is in heaven. Apostle Paul says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now it is, uh, paradise is in heaven. And right now, what has happened? Hell has enlarged. The Bible says, hell, let me just show you this. Uh, um, I don't know the verse very well, but let me just type it and see if it will come. Uh, I, I don't know which. Um, I will check for you that verse. Or let me check here. I don't like to say something and I don't give. Um, <clears throat> let me just search for this verse. <clears throat> Isaiah 5.14, let's come here, Isaiah 5.14, Isaiah 5.14, it's good to show you this because uh, it's good to understand, therefore hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and the he that rejoices shall descend unto it. You see, why has hell enlarged right now? Because the saints who are down there in a paradise, which was just next to hell, they have gone up with Jesus when he rose. And now that place is hell and then the, the, the old paradise. They have enlarged, now they have become one. So that now they can, many people can go there and many people will be going there. Those who don't believe the gospel. Are you seeing the point? <clears throat> Excuse me. So the Bible tells us about this. And it tells us that Jesus had been prophesied that he will die and resurrect. Okay. Jesus will die and resurrect. And that's where we have our hope. Because if you don't believe that Jesus rose again, then you don't know the gospel. You don't know the gospel. You don't believe. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death. Jesus has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and he made intercession for the transgressors. You have to understand that Jesus literally died. And after he died, he rose again. 
Are you seeing the point here? So it's very, very important. Unless you believe that Jesus died and rose again, then uh, <clears throat> you don't have salvation. Salvation is believing in those facts. Okay? And uh, understanding why Jesus had to die. Okay? So that, that's where the gospel is. That's where the gospel is. And uh, the Roman rule, the Roman rule brought crucifixion as a particularly uh, heinous form of capital punishment. Okay? It was a form of capital punishment. Many people were crucified for their crimes and for insulting Caesar and the things like that. So the facts of Jesus' crucifixion and burial, uh, th th those, those facts of Jesus' crucifixion and burial, they are not necessary, necessarily outstanding as many suffered the same fate. However, this is the good news. Jesus died because of, you know, he, he was told that he blasphemed this, he blasphemed that, which was not true. He was told that he called himself a king, he called himself God, and all those things, which was against Caesar and against all those people. But now the good thing about it is that the bodies of those other people are still in their graves. But Jesus' tomb, tomb is empty. The tomb of Jesus is empty. That's, that's the only difference, the big difference between Jesus and other people. And of course, we know uh, Jesus is saying that he's, he's, he's God. He's true. He did not blaspheme anyone. He said the truth. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus never sinned, and we believe that he never sinned. See here, and I said, and certain of them which were uh, which were with us went into the sculpture, uh, whatever, and found it even so as the woman had said, but him they saw not. Jesus was not there. He was not there in the tomb. That's that's the beautiful thing about Jesus' death. That we are sure he rose. And even right now, when you go to other places uh, to look for these other great men in the world, you will find their bones. But Jesus, you can't find his bones there. He, he is risen. Are you seeing the point here? So if Jesus never rose from the dead, there would be no compelling reason to believe that he is he who said he is. But the fact that he did rise again, confirming his claim to be God... Let me show you where he, he claimed to be God. He claimed to be God. You see, this is one of the things which made him to be crucified. They say, oh, he's blasphemed. Oh, see, saying, sir, we remember that that, that that deceiver said while he was yet alive. After three days, I will rise again. You see what, what they are talking about? They are calling Jesus that deceiver. He said that he will rise again. Huh? And they try to say, command therefore that the sculpt, oh, sometimes spellings, the tomb, <laughs> be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and uh, say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last era shall be worse than the first. You see, Pilate is the one who is telling people, go and watch his tomb. So that he doesn't wake up that deceiver. Was Jesus a deceiver? No. Jesus rose again. Rose again. He rose again. Jesus rose again. Okay? And also, we, are, we have these confirmations. And today, I just want to show you the verses because these are very important teaching. These are very important teaching so that you'll be able to understand. He's not here for his reason. And as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. Are you seeing? So we have to understand the fact that Jesus rose from the dead is also important because our justification, our justification hinges on it. If you believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's where your justification comes in. It is as if you never sinned because you took the righteousness of Jesus. Okay? Are you, are you, are you understanding the point? Because the book of Romans tells us about this. Romans uh, 4 uh, verse 25. It tells us about this 
Justification. Who was delivered for our offenses? So when Jesus was going to the cross, he was not going for his offenses, but yours. And he was raised again for our justification. You see the point here? So our justification relies on Jesus' resurrection. So if Jesus does not resurrect, my friends, we are doomed. And that's why we are so happy that Jesus rose. A dead Savior cannot save, but we have a living Savior who justifies us and makes intercession for us. Jesus is alive and he makes intercessions for us. Okay? Don't worry about what people say. They are worshipping other gods who are dead and they don't they are not alive but our jesus is alive wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him seeing he ever liveth you see jesus lives liveth to make intercession for them jesus is alive and it, him being alive he prays for us he has justified us through his life <laughs> are you seeing this fact which is so important this is a fact that purely, purely 100% Jesus rose from the dead. And that fact is a fundamental uh, thing to our faith. It's very important to our faith. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, it's, it's, it's really uh, a detailed explanation of the importance of Jesus' resurrection. And verse 14, this one here, which I've highlighted here, states, that if Christ had not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and our faith is in vain. If he did not rise, then we would be preaching nothing. But you are preaching him because he is risen. We have hope. Are you seeing the point here? In fact, if Jesus had not been raised, our faith is futile. You are still under your sins. Remember what verse 17 says, 1 Corinthians 15, 18. 1 Corinthians uh, 15, verse uh, 18. If Jesus could not have risen, mm, see, 17 actually, if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Are you seeing the point here? If Jesus could not have raised, you could still be in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep, uh, asleep in Christ are perished. Everybody could have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all of men most miserable. If Jesus could have died and never rose again, we could be the most miserable team of brethren. But the good thing, the good news is Jesus is alive. And that fact makes us understand that, oh, we have some hope. Are you seeing the point here? Because Jesus, he rose from the dead and Paul presents that event as the only thing that gives us hope in this life. Christ was the first to permanently rise from the dead. He was the first one to rise. Are you, are, are you, are you seeing this point? 1 Corinthians uh, 15 verses uh, 20. Ah, it's just here. <laughs> But now is Christ risen from the dead and become first fruits of them that slept. Jesus is the first fruits of them that died. He rose. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. You see, Adam brought us death and Jesus brought us life. See, for as in Adam... All die. You died with Adam. The wages of sin is death. You're, you're already dead if you do not uh, believe in Christ. You're dead because your father Adam is a sinner and you have his genes. You're a sinner also. But if you are alive in Christ, man, you're alive. You have no death anymore. Are you seeing the point here? So it's really, really important to understand that Christ is our resurrection. He is our resurrection. He is our resurrection. We are going to heaven someday, one day, one time. We will go. Our future resurrection in the rapture. 
all those who believe everyone who believes okay everyone who believe will be made alive we will be made alive but every man in his own order jesus was the first fruits you see christ the first fruits after that they that are christ at his coming when jesus comes when jesus comes we will go with the rapture are you seeing the point here so jesus is claimed that he has the power to grant eternal life is to be trusted because he himself conquered death and rose again let me show you two more verses before i stop romans 8 verse 11 jesus conquered death oops i've written 1111 and something <laughs> romans 8 verse 11 jesus conquered death but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised him. What is that spirit which raised Jesus from the dead? The spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken. The same Holy Spirit shall quicken your mortal bodies by the, his spirit that dwells in you. Remember, my friends, when you're saved, you get the Holy Spirit in you. Ephesians 1.13, in whom that you believed, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit comes inside you. So he is sealed unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4.30 also. So that Holy Spirit will quicken your mortal bodies. He will change your bodies that time of the rapture. And also in uh, John uh, John 3, uh, 10. Uh, actually, let me read John 3, 16 first to 18 and then John 10, 28. And we close there. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes, believes that that death was not in vain. It was for him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. He did not come to tell you how much bad you are, how much of a sinner you are. Moses already did that. Moses told you, hey, do not lie, do not steal, do not kill. Moses already did that. Jesus was coming to counter all that and tell you, okay, Moses told you you're a sinner, but now I've come to give you life. But he, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. You can be condemned to hell if you believe in Jesus, but he that believeth not is condemned already. You're already a sinner. Moses already told you through the law that you're already a sinner because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And finally, my friends, John, uh, John 10, verse uh, 28, it tells us, it tells us this, that... Uh, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My friends, when you have eternal life, nobody will pluck it. Why? Because my father, Jesus says, my father which gave them uh, me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one, my friends, who can pick you, who can who do you think can be able to separate you from God? Who can separate you from Jesus, the Son, and his Father? <laughs> Unless that person is really strong. It's not, not possible. You're very much sealed there. My friends, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. You can give it a thumbs up. And also you can share the video so that other people can be able to understand and know and hear the gospel. And uh, also you can subscribe to watch more videos which you post every day. And uh, likewise, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any video which you post. And um, also check uh, in the description. We have a couple of other channels outside uh, YouTube that you can go and see what we post. And share also to your friends. God bless you and have a good time.